spin for the posting of the colors and the playing of the national anthem by the march musical machine of the mid south
Center for Morehouse College, led by head coach Rich Freeman. I mishear them. I believe they said that they were going to defer, but I guess we're kicking off, so never mind about the offensive things. The Golden Toe looking to kick off. I could have swore they said that the Morehouse deferred yeah, the to the second half, but I guess not. Jamie Gillen, preseason All-American. One of the best legs in the swag. That is hands down. It's going to start us off in this game today. Beautiful day today, great day for football. Just under 90 degrees, 87 degrees to be exact. Wind looking low, so it's gonna be no distractions here as Jamie Gillen sets us up. First game of the season, we are underway. Back to receive in the end zone, deep in the end zone. They're gonna just go ahead and take a knee right there. And let's go. First game of the season, first commentary position of the season. It's not about me, it's about the players as we're getting underway. A lot of familiar faces for the defense of the Golden Lions. 
And a lot of familiar faces on the offense. This is a great way to start just to see where we're at. The coaching philosophy of Sedgwick Th Thomas being put to the first test here tonight. Brand new jerseys, all black from the Golden Lions, all white coming in from Morehouse College. As we look to start, we we'll start out in the spread. Number 17, Michael Sims. I remember him from last year, and already they got flags on the field. Ricky Knuckles, maybe a legal formation, uh, illegal motion. Let's see. And a bad start for Morehouse College as they begin with the false start. First and 15 already, and we're just getting underway here. 15 just starting. First snap hasn't even been made now. Michael Sims looks to get the snap now. Ricky Knuckles coming across, motioning right. Quick fire pass to the outside. The intended target, number three. Looking for Antonio Johnson on that play. Not able to find him. A little bit behind him there. He would, they would have had a little bit of space if they were able to connect. Michael Sims looks to reset. Second and 15 after that first down penalty. Knuckles again shifting to the outside. A lot of, a lot of the same looks we've seen. Run inside now to the left side. Almost gets it to the second level, but now it's going to be stopped three yards short. Number 27 on the tackle. That's Isaiah Johnson, red shirt junior, 185 pounds, big boy right there on the defensive backside, playing that nickel. Running the hurry up already, though, not taking much time to huddle. Michael Sims is back, third and 11. Almost got a jump and didn't cross the line. Now they're getting their call, they're getting set Oregon style offense. They're rocking the spread. Trips right. They're going to call a timeout early. A little bit of trouble coming in from the offensive side of Morehouse College as they have started off with a penalty and ended up having some formation issues in the first drive of the game. Haven't even gotten the first down yet. Early, early, early jitters. First game jitters probably coming from. Morehouse College, but I can imagine the same thing is happening with UAPB. First time head coach Cedric Thomas, he was a defense coordinator, I believe, for Alcorn State. I'll double check my facts here, but I believe I'm right. Also, a UAPB alumni, Cedric Thomas. It's going to be interesting to see. Defense doing a great job so far, but we've again just started. Less than a minute in the first quarter. It will be third down and 11 for the Balloon Tigers. And here comes our Golden Lions defense. Third and 11 now. All four, oh, five receivers out on the field. Four of them stacked to the right-hand side. Takes the pass, drop back. A little bit of a stumble there. Finds the target, but can he find the first down? No, he's going to be stuffed. Going to be stopped right before he gets to the marker, dragged backwards. Great first possession, or well, at least first defensive possession there by the UAPB Golden Lions. Great job there getting through the ball and getting the ball away from the first down marker. It's going to be fourth and short, and they're setting up their punting unit. And for the Golden Lions, number seven, Tyron Brown. Back to kick, Tyron Golan. And it's a high punt, not very far. Ooh, caught and dropped immediately. He got hit as soon as he got in, and there a little bit. There's a little bit of heat going on because of that one. Didn't call for a fair catch. It was fair game in my eyes, but he did get leveled at the end of that one. Able to hang on to the ball now. Now this offense, I can actually talk about him now. Shannon Patrick, 4,500 yards at his JUCO of North, of North State. His JUCO numbers are very good, but can he can he perform at this level of competition? Shannon Patrick. It's going to be interesting to see him work this offense from the shotgun. Spread look. Showing blitz. Morehouse State. Inside run, and there we go. Number two. 
He breaks free. Taylor Porter already in the second level. It's going to be a touchdown. Golden Lions on the very first play. Wow. How about that measuring stick, huh? It's been measured all right. As long as there is no flags on the field, and there might be, I hear booing. And it is a flag on the field, holding. Oh my goodness. The highest of highs and the lowest of lows achieved already. First play, holding call. Could have been a, an early score, a relatively easy score, but in, but in the end, 10 yards the other direction. How crazy of a first player play can you get? Called on the play, I believe it's going to be number 71. A sophomore at Winchester, Arkansas, Zion Farmer. Ah, oh, geez, you don't, you don't like to see that. That is a rough way to start the game. Shannon Patrick starting with a little bit of a disadvantage now. First and 20. Spread look again. Inside, same play, this time not as successful. Stuffed up the middle for a short gain, almost menial. I think they might have a different set of names than I do, but we're going to work through it. God, get that first guy some oxygen. Again, spread look. Fires over the middle. What a, what a pass that was. Good God, what a laser right above the middle, pinning, threading the needle on that play. And they're going to run the hurry up. You don't see this from UAP very often, but there you go. Hurry up being run. Shannon Patrick showing off that cannon. Inside handoff. Looks for the counter. Breaks a tackle, but not going to get much. Going to lose a yard on that play. Hey, trying to find some names here. Number 24 on that play on the snap for Morehouse. Mandel Ray coming in and stuffing the inside run. Shannon Patrick again, this time three receivers to the right. Another inside handoff actually is a sweep. Taylor Porter again showing off a bit of that speed gets to the second level. That's a six yard gain. It's gonna end up being third and five now. Putting a lot of trust in this running game already. And why wouldn't you after that first, after that starting possession? A lot more up-tempo coming in from the UAPB as they set up again. Spread look. Keeping that defense spread out, keeping the box thin. Showing blitz is Morehouse. Antonio Johnson adjusts to the inside now, looks for the drag. Shannon Patrick can't get away from the pressure. He's going to be sacked. Shannon Patrick on the carry, tripped up by number 34 for the Excuse me, number one tiger. It's going to be fourth down now, but man, it was a great start of the possession, but it ended up being taken away by a flag. Shannon Patrick ended up getting sacked, trips up a little bit before he can get to the line of scrimmage. Now the golden choke, Jamie Gillen looking to pin him back and give our defense a chance to work. 10.50 and counting. Oh, no. Muff, the snap. Gillen got to get away. Finally gets the kickoff and is still able to get it long. It's received, but is at the 20 yard line. He's going to run it out of bounds. Man, oh man. Dangerous possessions by both men. Good job by Jamie Gillen finally getting that ball away. That was a lucky break for sure. Ball just ended up going through his hands and he was able to hold on to it, get some space, and get the ball away. Now from the 20 yard line or on the 19, it looks like they're spotting it. Michael Sims looks to go back to work. 0-0 after both teams have possession. A three and out on one side and uh, a penalty removing a touchdown on the other. Tight end shifts, inside handoff, number three. Number two, excuse me. Excuse me, number one, Santo Dunn on the, on the carry there. Five-yard gain on the play. 
trying to get the running game working. The passing game has been a little bit iffy from the start. Michael Sims again from the spread this time. Two tight ends. Shifts one over to the left. And inside handoff. No, it was a fake throw over the middle. And he had, could not find the target. Target was number five, Amir Smith. He had an opening, but he just can't find him. The accuracy being called into question. Third and six now. Another three and out. And threatened by the Golden Lions defense, who's been playing pretty well. There's been some holes, but luckily enough, I'm sorry, the referee had called a stop to the clock. I'm trying to figure out what he's signaling for. I guess they didn't, they only had 10 men on the field. Might have something to do with that. Normally you just throw a flag in that case, but either way. Stack trips right. Ricky Knuckles gonna fake a motion, go back to his position. Michael Sims gets the snap. Bit of a drop back underneath now. Working a ball to this right and is able to get just enough for the first down there at the 30 yard line. Six yard gain on the play. First connection for Michael Sims today. Amir Smith on the catch and run. Able to get enough, just enough for the first down. First first down of the day. Getting again liking that stack trips look. Sims takes a snap, fakes the handoff. He takes it himself. Sims falls down around the at the numbers after a four-yard gain. Michael Sims on the keeper. Nice keeper there on that play. He had about a two-yard game. They're going to respot the ball. Looks like it's a second and eight. Second and eight now for the Morehouse Maroon Tigers. Trying to find a crack in this defense. Sims looking at a spread look with a tight end to the left. Sims hands it off now. Ooh, big time hit on Santonio Dunn. Santo Dunn. The big hit is made by Jacaven, Kevin Carter. Flew in on that play. Smash him. And now another third down for your Golden Lions as they look to try to get something going here. Trying to stop him before they can reach the halfway point. Michael Sims. This time with a tight look. Fakes the handoff. Passes there, but is not able to get there. Oh my goodness. He flag on the play. Pass interference, but the ball was over his head. I'm not entirely sure how you call that. There was no way he could have made a play on that ball, but either way, they're going to call pass interference. Well, that's going to be Sean Steele who had that one. That was a bad play on both parts. I mean, uh, you can say what you want about the call, but the play itself, Sean Steele had grabbed him around the shoulders and slung him to the ground while the ball was in, I guess, the area that they're going to go. It's going to be a, a spot on the ball penalty, a 15-yard penalty. It's going to give him another first down. Penalties are going to be a problem if they're going to keep happening. They were a problem last year, over 400 yards in penalties. Inside run this time. Number two, Frank Bailey on the carry. Frank Bailey Jr. A nice hard running three yard game right there. Number 58 on the tackle. Jalen Stewart stuffing him in his tracks. Now again with the two tight end now. Two tight end look. Michael Sims. Hands off inside. Not able to get any room this time. Frank Bailey Jr. is going to be mauled by a pride of Lions right back where they started at the line of, at the original line of scrimmage. Losing three. A lot of shifting and moving in the formations now. Substitutions being made on both sides. Third and long now at the 49 yard line, looking to see if they end up encroaching into Golden Lion territory. In the backfield, number two, Frank Bailey Jr., Michael Sims. Deep drop back. 
Deep routes being thrown. Ricky Knuckles had a one-hand catch opportunity, and I don't think he hauled it in. No, he didn't. It was going to be called incomplete. It was a great, it was a great move to try to catch the ball. He reached back behind him and almost grabbed it in, but not quite. Ricky Knuckles, one of the more talented people from the from last year around, back again. And speaking of back again, let's see what this offense can do when they get back on the field. Trying to catch the number on the kick return, but either way. Short punt again. And it's going to be caught by number 33. On the Browns side, Trayvon Baker is going to catch it. Trayvon Baker is going to catch it on that play, and that's going to set up the Golden Lions at around the 27 or so. 28-yard line is the official spot. Oof, Shannon Patrick, man, he showed off a little bit of that arm. He showed off a little bit of... The handoff ability, I guess, but gosh, Shannon Patrick, that guy, he has a cannon. After looking at his stats, 42 touchdowns in a 12-game season at his junior college as he sets up again. Inside handoff to Porter. Can't get too much on that. He's going to gain four, though. Great hard running there by Porter. It's all about the offensive line, and that's one of the main main weaknesses of UAPB for a couple of years now. They haven't had an offensive line that could really open up holes for the running game. They've had to utilize their running backs in different ways now. Two running backs in the backfield now. Fakes the handoff now. Patrick finds no one. He's going to be hit as he threw. Spent a little bit too much time in the pocket, and that's exactly what they don't need to avoid. They need to avoid their man getting pressure. Third and eight now after the incomplete pass. Shannon Patrick trying to find a man. Couldn't find one in time. Got hit as he threw. Number seven checking in. Tyron Ralph. That's a fresh face. That's a familiar face I like to see. Three receivers to the right. Patrick now directing traffic. Sets up. Ball snap. Quick read. Finds number three. Oh, nice back step, but in the end, doesn't get enough for the first down. It's going to be fourth down now. Great defensive ball we're seeing, but there have been mistakes on both sides when it came to penalties. Oh, we have a Morehouse player down. Official timeout on the play. We're going to take a break right here. We'll be right back as soon as the action resumes. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. Just over halfway into the first quarter. 0-0 the score after some great defensive play on both teams. It's fourth down and sh uh, fourth down and three. I need my glasses out sometimes when I'm up here in this booth, ladies and gentlemen. But fourth down and three, Jamie Gillen looking to get a punt going. They send the punt block, but it's going to be a long and deep kick. Fair catch at around, let's see where they spot it. At the 19 is where they spot it. Punt return caught by number. Oh, they don't have it listed here. They don't have a designated kick returner listed here. So we're going to get that as we do. It's a long game, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get the names as we go. As Morehouse's offense is already on the field, the defense still getting set up. And now here they come to take the field. Defense has been doing pretty good so far, besides a little bit of a. Uh, Lack of discipline in the penalty department. But either way, they've been holding Morehouse pretty steadfast so far. Let's see how they go from now. As Michael Sims looks to take the snap. Two receivers, two receivers to the left. Inside handoff, weak side. Can't get by. There's two Lions sitting right in the hole he was trying to get. 
Beautiful defense there. Beautiful patient and disciplined defense to stick, stay in their area. Don't charge in and give them a room. Give them some room. That was Bailey on the carry. Bailey Jr. on the carry can't get there, right? So second and ten after no game on the running play. Sims takes a snap. Inside handoff to Bailey again. This time he finds a hole. And he's gone. He is looking to be caught. He is caught. At the 30-yard line, long run. That's about 40 plus yards in the run department there. Frank Bailey Jr. finally finds that hole he was looking for in the UAPB defense. And now they're about as deep as UAPB territory as they have been this whole quarter. Momentum has started to shift. UAPB now trying to set up and stop the run. Frank Bailey Jr. is going to get the carry again. Runs into his own man in the backfield, and that's not going to help his cause. As he ends up getting stopped for no, for one, uh, for no gain, really. Bailey on the carry. Stop made by number 50, Kevin Agee. Kevin Agee on the stop that time. Six foot three, 250, the senior on this defensive line squad. Second and 10 from the 30. Dangerous territory. Tight formation now. Fakes the handoff. Sims fires long over the middle. Open man. Did he catch it? He did catch it, but it's going to be marked short. He fell to the ground before he got, in, got across the line, and that's a favorable spot if I've ever seen one, but on the one now. Terrell Gooden catching the Michael Sims pass over the middle. That was a great offensive play call. Can't say anything about it. On the goal line now, or at least the one-yard line. Threatening the first score of the game. Michael Sims now takes a snap inside run. No, actually, it was faked. And he's able to fight his way into the, into the end zone for a touchdown. Morehouse Maroon Tigers strike first. There is a flag on the play, though. Let's see what it is. formation on the offense. An illegal formation on the offense is going to rob them of a touchdown now. Now both teams have been robbed by penalties from surefire scores. Of course, one was a little more dire than the, the other, but either way, now it's going to be first and goal from the six-yard line instead of from the goal line. Sims now looking to get his Maroon Tigers into the end zone. Here's a shift across the middle. Hand off to number one. Santel done. Oh, it's upended all the way back to his feet. Good God. That was, a, that was intense. That was an intense hit right there. Someone get me that guy's number. I don't know if that was an optical illusion or what, but he was upended, slid across the ground, and ended up back on his feet. That's what it looked like from my view. Either way, Michael Sims looking to punch it into the end zone. Inside run to number 27. And that's going to be a score, barring any other penalties they want to imply. I guess it is a score. Ronald... Bradley, their goal line runner, punches it in as Morehouse Maroon Tiger strike first. Well, it was either going to be one or the other, and I guess he ended up with a big run that changes the momentum of the game, and they end up shifting it right into Maroon's house. Let's see if the Golden Lions can bounce back when they get possession. They started out great, but didn't end up so hot in the end. 
Well, the Tigers going for the extra point. The extra point is good. Fernando Sedamara putting in the extra point. Off of the one yard run by Ronald Bradley to get us into this score. More outs for room, Tigers seven, UAPB zero. Approaching the end of the first quarter, but still some time left, two minutes, 43 seconds. Man, you know, new coach is always gonna be new game jitters, first game jitters. We're gonna see how Cedric Thomas, how Coach Thomas handles being behind. The National Alumni Association will be celebrating its 10th year anniversary of the Hall of Fame. We'll be right back after this. Alumni and friends who have made significant contributions to the University, the National Alumni Association, and the community. All right, we're ready for the kickoff here. Score zero to seven. Morehouse Maroons Tigers are ahead by one score, but we're already early in this game, approaching the end of the first quarter. Two minutes, 43 seconds until that, until that occurs. Jalon Peterson back to receive the, the kick. Here we go. All gonna be received at the 15 yard line and looking for his blockers. Does get there, man. In the end, we're gonna be stopped at around the 27 yard line or so. All right, first and 10. Let's see if Shannon Patrick and the offensive coordinator can figure something out here. Whole new coaching staff here on pretty much every major position has a new coach in there. Coach, coach Gales running the offense. Let's see what he has up his sleeve for this drive. Now we quarterback, Looks like we're rocking a new quarterback and a flag has been down on the play. Let's see what happens. Play of game on the offense, number 11, up Skyler Perry, the new quarterback on the, the field as they've, they've been the biggest story coming out of the offices has been the quarterback battle between Patrick and uh, Skyler Perry. They seem to be a confusive unit. Let's see what Perry can do from his position. Perry gets the, gets the snap, gets the handoff now. Oof, big hit after a short game. I hear the PA system, but either way, short gain on the inside run play. Actually, they're going to end up losing yards. No, 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 no. It's a short gain because they had a delay of game penalty to start. Spread look again. Skyler Perry, the freshman, hands it off. Can't get anything going from the run game still. Stop them through a menial gain. They need to get something big on the third down, or let's see if they just try to poke something at the bear and see how they're responsive so they have something to game plan for the next time. A lot of possessions left in this game. We're still in the first quarter. 145 remaining and counting down. Skyler Perry now resetting the offense, directing traffic. Here we go. Fakes the inside handoff. Gets a pass off to number 86. It's DeWan Miller on the catch. But it's not enough to move the chain. Let's see what, let's see what Coach Gales has up his sleeve. Offensive still on the field, not even thinking about kicking it now. Up, oh, there we go. Here's the punting team. They thought about it, but decided against it. I, ex I expect Perry to come back out in the next offensive possession. Either way, fourth and short. Jamie Gillen making his third punt of the game. I still can't get over that first touchdown we nearly had and ended up getting taken away by a holding call. 
Ball is going to be long, and can it stop at the goal line? Not quite. They couldn't quite catch up to it in time. They're going to be catching a touchback on the 20. Man, Jamie Gillett from at least 80 yards away can hit it. You can hit a water bottle standing from 80 yards away with that foot. That's a golden toe if I've ever seen it when 36 seconds left in the first quarter. Maroon Zyger 7, Golden Lion 0. Maroon Tigers offense looking to take the field. Like I said, just 36 seconds left in the first quarter. Still a lot of game to go, but Maroon Tigers have struck first. Let's see what, de let's see what defensive adjustments have been made so far. Defense comes out with four down linemen. Scratch that two down linemen. Two receivers right, two, two running backs in the backfield for Smith as he hits out the screen. Can't break free, but he is break a tackle. He's forced out of bounds at around the 23, or excuse me, the 26. We have good chunk of yardage for the, towards the first down. Michael Sims gets that five-yard reception on the bootleg screen. Two receivers in the backfield still. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and is going to go straight to the ground. Not going to take any risk there. Inside run, not quite going to happen there for, for Michael Sims. Third and the route four. And we're approaching the end of the first quarter here. Ladies and gentlemen, Maroon Tigers have struck first 7-0. to zero. Let's see, and, they're all, and they have the ball. Let's see what they have for this third down possession coming up right after this. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Simmons Bank Stadium as your Golden Lions go up against Maroon, the Morehouse Maroon Tigers. Gosh, that's a tongue twister if I've ever had one, but either way, Maroon Tigers struck first on the day. Seven points on the board after a very exciting first quarter. First play could have been a touchdown for UABB Golden Lions, but it was taken back by a holding call. Now the Maroon Tigers have a ball here at third and five. Ricky Knuckles shifting across to his right. Sims looks for the quick, quick look. Can't find it. Finds number seven on the play. Hey, that's Tr Tramel Gooden. Hauls in that medium pass attempt and gets the first down on third and six. As I just received some stats there. Outside play gets a couple of yards for Maroon Golden Tigers. <laughs> I just say Maroon Golden Tigers, jeez. First game juniors affects everyone, not just the people on the field, ladies and gentlemen. The Maroon Tigers gets a couple yards on the first down play. Ends up on the 37-yard line. That's right. This is a measuring stick test for Coach Cedric Thomas and his crew that he brought in. A lot of new stuff, new field, new Tron, new jerseys, new helmets. And now here comes Sims. Michael Sims trying to break away the outside, but 
chased down, hawked down like a like a antelope with a bunch of lions right there. Animal Planet, help me out here and give me a visual. I'm sure they probably can. <laughs> Either way, third down and long this time. They converted a two out of three of their last, two of their last three third downs. Let's see if the Golden Lions can stop them here. It's the problem when you have two teams with adjectives in front of their mascot name, and you get them both confused. Now, four stack to the right. Michael Sims by himself, and they're going to call a delay of game. Trying to conserve that timeout. They used one in the very first possession, and they're going to be filling it now. And those timeouts get more and more valuable later on in the game. Now, timeout from... Actually, I think they called a timeout before they got a delay of game. But we're going to keep it right here, ladies and gentlemen. The Golden Lions have been revamped and renewed. But it's all about the culture. It has the culture changed sufficiently enough for them to make an impact in the Southwest Athletic Conference. Or the SWAC, if you will. A lot of new faces. The defensive coordinator, Juan Navarro. Coach, coach Navarro, I'm going to respect these men by calling him coach. Coach, new offensive line coach, everything. Thank you, got stats. There we go. Uh, got some stats from the first quarter. Morehouse, Morehouse College, Frank, Frank Bailey, five carries for 53 yards. Santo Dunn, four carries for 15 yards. Frank Bailey in the backfield right now. Three receivers to the right, but again, now another timeout has been called. Man, it's been a timeout to Palooza. And they came out and look, I guess they didn't like. Either way, we're going through the, the stats in the first quarter. Michael Sims, four of seven for 50 yards. Big play there. Shannon Patrick came out, came out the gate hot, but didn't quite. Can't fight to find this man. He has, he has a little time getting happy feet in the pocket. His pocket slowly concerns, uh, slowly closes around him. So we're going to see how Shannon Patrick works and or Michael pa or Skyler Perry, excuse me. How they both work is they're still in the midst of this major quarterback battle. Both men have arms that we've seen, but it's just a matter of who can really take this, take this game by the reins and move forward. 13 8 in the second quarter, just getting started, and there's been two timeouts consecutively called by both teams. And so we're just kind of sitting there holding on to what else, whatever we have left. As the Maroon Golden, the Maroon Tigers, jeez, not the Maroon Golden Tigers, but the Maroon Tigers are ahead by seven. And another third down play. Michael Sims. Who has three receivers to his right. And a fourth one shifting behind. Looks for the bubble screen. Oh, double pass. Wide open. It's caught. He's going all the way. No one's catching him there. The double pass by the Maroon Tigers tricked him up again. 14 or 13 0, the current score, my, barring the extra point. I mean, it's entertaining football, ladies and gentlemen, but you don't, don't want to see it go the other way. I saw that double pass from a mile away. As soon as number seven got that ball, he just was looking to chuck it, and he got an accurate, accurate ball right into the hands of the receiver. And uh, extra point is going to be kicked. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a two-score lead. And it is good by number 36, Fernando Del Moro. The, first, the man making the pass on that plate, Tremel Gooden. Catch being made by number 27, Ronald Bradley. I believe, unless I'm, until I'm told something different, that's what I'm going with. Man, I'm just, I just can't help but hang my head on that play. 
I can't think of anything that UAVB could have done on that play. It was a bubble screen. It looked, it was a very deep bubble screen too. And it was just released into an amazing seam by Ronald Bradley. No one saw it coming. No defensive back saw it, had an eye on him. And I guess it just wasn't in their game plan. They didn't think about the trickery. 14-0, the score. 12-57, and UABB is in a bit of a bit of a pickle. Just a bit of a pickle. Still a long game ahead of us. We're still in the second quarter, but man, oh man, you don't like seeing this. The Maroon Tigers caught a break with that early penalty, and now they're taking complete and total advantage of it. As they look to kick the ball off yet again. Let's see if we can get our offense working here. First, we start with the special teams as they're back to receive. Hard kick, line driver. Caught at the goal line, and he's going to bring it up. And that's going to be a poor decision as there's a rogue helmet rolling in. I thought it was a ball. Flag, on, flag down on the play. Could be a cut block on the back side there. That's not legal on kick returns. But we'll see. We'll see what the official call is. Holding caught on the play from Nicholas Stroud on that play. It's not been the amount of penalties that's been hurting UAPV so far. It's just been the timing of the penalties that has been really shooting us in the foot. We're going to see who steps out on quarterback this time around. After the it looks like Skyler Perry is going to be out there today or on, this, on this possession. But he has to start from his own five. He's trying to get out of the shadow of their own end zone. Fires. Left side, caught, and it's going to be ruled incomplete and not a fumble, thankfully. It was caught by number seven. It was caught by Tyron Ralph, but uh, he didn't have complete possession in the eyes of the referees, so moving right along, I guess. Shannon Patrick stepping back in, mid-possession. Inside handoff. Porter only able to get to the inside, only able to get to the line of scrimmage. This could be a huge possession problem as they're fighting over something. What's happening over on the field? Callaway on the tackle. Third and 10. Shannon Patrick. Takes a snap. Handoff. Porter going to get a little bit of space. Hard running by Porter. A hard six yards there. As it's now fourth down, for a three and out after, um, after a poor kick return. That's, that was followed by... And even poor offensive effort, but either way, Golden Lions have got to find something. Now they're relying on Jamie Gillen to get this ball out of their end zone. He's going to be kicking from five yards deep into his end zone. And you got to imagine that Morehouse is sending the house at it. You could say they're sending the Morehouse at it, but, you know, that's just corny jokes for me. Anyway, Gillen. Gets the ball high, high, high in the sky. Ball stops at around the, you know, it gets by the past the 50. Stops at around the 46, maybe. Depends on the spot. They're going to call it, yeah, the 46. And now Morehouse's offense gets right back on the field. They are ahead 14 to zip. And Morehouse seems to be pretty good right now. You always have this concern when you have a new coach on the team. 
How will the players, when it comes to game time, how will they respond to adversity? Well, we're going to see how they do it right now. Defense have been doing well so far, but at least to as well as you, ex you would expect coming in from with a new coach. They've had a couple of good three and outs, and now they're having a substitution issue as they finally get someone off the field. Inside run. Don't know if he stops after about a two-yard gain. Frank Bailey Jr. on the play, going to carry on that time. And the two on the play brings up second down and eight. It's going to be it's an uphill battle from here, ladies and gentlemen. The Golden Lions have got to get some stops on off, on defense, but they have to get their offense in a position where they can do something about it. As they're looking at second down and eight. Michael Sims steps back, fires, and it's going to be way out of bounds that time. A little bit behind his target. Five. And Amir Smith was the target. Just a little bit behind him. And into uh, looks, looks to be either the, one of the trainers. Third and eight now. Golden Lions defense staring down another third down, but the past couple third downs have led to scores. Let's see what the defense has for him now. Bailey to Bailey to Sims is right. Fires can't can't, can't haul it in this time. Great defense there from the secondary. Ronald Rocket the third pulling off the defense on that play. Great job by the defense now. Now they just need some field position. It's been a field position game this whole quarter. Besides the one trick play they got to get the, to get to the end zone. Morehouse looking to kick it away. Now shifting their formation. Slice the kick. Maybe, but it's going to be called fair catch. And around the 16 to 18 yard line. UAPB has got to get their offense going if they want a chance in this game. They have to get at least something positive out of this possession so that they can carry it into the next one. You want to at least get three points. I mean, Jamie Gillen's range has got to be from the 35 back. So if you can at least get three points on the field and know that you can do it against this defense, that will do a lot going forward. But right now, Shannon Patrick stepping in taking over quarterback duty so far. He might be with us for a while. Shannon hands the ball off. And a flag down in the play as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage again. The running game has not been able to get anything done so far. Let's see what this flag is it's from the back so you know it's probably holding. And yep. It's almost like I'm psychic or something. They're going to accept the penalty and repeat the first down. They got to find something. And it starts with the running game. They haven't been able to get a lot going from them. They tried everything. They tried the inside run, which was successful once, but it didn't really count because of the penalty. The outside run has been less successful. Shifting away. Patrick to the screen. Gets a block. Can he get anything up more than that? He does get seven yards in the play. So there's a chance now. As they are approaching the original line of scrimmage now. <laughs> I forgot that there was a penalty to the first play. Either way, the first, they got back to the original line of scrimmage, or at least close to it. Second and 12 or 13. Patrick gets the snap, drops back, has time, fires over the middle. Oh, God! Oh, my goodness, what a circus catch! Jeez! You gotta look at that catch! 
to believe it. Somebody tell me we have a replay somewhere. Chris Robinson, the second. Catching that ball, oh, man, false snap though. As no one was set. There's no foul on the play. We're waiting for a legal substitution. Okay, so no, all right, no, no problem there. Whew. Man, that could have been different. That could have been difficult. They're waiting on substitution on the play. Great play, though, by Shannon Patrick, finding the space between two or three goal, uh, Maroon Tigers on that play. Shannon Patrick showing off that cannon. Inside handoff now. Porter finds enough space to get three yards. And you can feel the momentum. There's a buzz going on in the crowd. The momentum is starting to shift, but they have to get a little bit further. Robinson and Ralph on the right-hand side. Patrick gets the snap. Fires. Caught. That's number five. Colby McNeil, and he's able to get the first down. And now the Golden Lions are starting to get the ball rolling. Now they're rocking the, the hurry-up offense. The defense isn't set yet. Patrick drops back to pass. Fires. Long ball. Caught. Wilkes. Touchdown. Golden Lions. Pass and catch and run. Shannon, the mobile cannon. Patrick finds his first target. Josh Brooks for his first touchdown of the season. The first touchdown here at Sears Bank Field for the Golden Lions. And my oh my, it couldn't have come at a more opportune time, 8.05. Hopefully we get the official figures, but I believe it was a 30-plus yard touchdown. Jamie Gillen setting up for the extra point, and it's almost always automatic from the one true toe, the golden toe, Jamie Gillen. And now they just cut this lead in half. Maroon Tigers still ahead, 14-7. Uh, to seven. But the glimmer of hope has been shown upon Simmons Bank Field. Oh man, what a start of this game. It's been dramatic from the get-go. Now can the defense repeat its performance? And show us something that maybe we haven't seen for a little bit. We've seen a lot of it last season. Don't get me wrong, but can we have it lead to a victory this time? Can they show us that heart, that lion's heart we know they have? As Jamie Gillen sets up to get the ball off after his extra point attempt went through. 8.05 left in the first half. 14-7 to seven the score, Maroon Tigers ahead by one score. That golden left toe is about to be put to work here. Here we go. All received at the five. And tackled at the 20. Pretty good job by the coverage team there. Now it's all about the defense. Can the defense keep them here? A three and out would be great. Keeping them from scoring would be acceptable at the very least now give us an opportunity to get back into this game a turnover would be fantastic but wishful thinking can only get your wishes it's all about the playing and coach navarro is doing all the planning right now let's see what this defense has in store for us as michael stims gets ready to take his first snap of the drive Bit of a stoppage play right now. Give us a moment. 
Referees just checking spots and having conversation, maybe a little bit of a sip of tea, if you will. There's no foul for the of game. All right, they were just confirming that there was no delay of game on the play as uh, the cock was running prematurely, and uh, we're ready to get this drive underway. Eight minutes exactly on the dot left in the second half, in the first half, excuse me. Oh, boy, what a hit there on that play. Give me a number, please. Santo Dunn on the carry. Santo Dunn on the carry. Number 58, Jalen Stewart, defensive end, the junior, six foot four, 260, big buff boys. <laughs> Able to make the play in the backfield. Strong play in the backfield there. Leads to second and 12, Michael Sims. Ricky Knuckles coming across. He does not get the handoff, fakes the handoff there, and only gets one. Not fooling the defense this time around either. Michael Sims on the keeper. On the stop again, number 58, Jalen Stewart. Gain of about one. He's a third down in Jalen Stewart all and over the place. He gets the tackle he again. He's forming a relative wall there on that right side of the defense. Here we go. Third and 11. Michael Sims surveying the defense, now takes the snap. Fires, right side, double pass not incoming this time. It was just a, a bubble screen. Bit of a safer option, does not get the first down, comes close, only a yard short. 10 yard gain. And it looks like they're gonna punt this one away. Great job by the defense getting a three and out on that drive. And that was much needed. Coach Navarro doing an excellent job on that drive there. Not letting the, OC, the opposition's OC get the better of them. Here we go. The punt is underway. And fair catch called. Received at about the 40, I mean 38. Tyron Ralph. Fair catching in about the 38-yard line. This is the big chance for the UABB offense to tie this game up. They have pretty decent, they have pretty decent field position. And they just need to go to work here. Trying to find that passing game at home. That can probably open up things for the running game. You normally hear about it going the opposite, opposite way, the running game setting up the passing game, but in this case, it has been the exact opposite. The running game, I mean, the passing game might end up setting up the running game later on. Back in the game, Shannon Patrick. Inside handoff to Porter. Gets about three on the play. Looks like four. Official spot going to make it three. Porter has been doing a relatively good job. I mean, honestly, hey, Taylor Porter has been showing a lot of toughness here on the inside running game. Patrick now, three receivers to his right. Takes the snap. Finds the receiver who had to stretch out to haul that one in. Is only going to get a couple on that play. A little bit of not a targeting issue there, but not much of a problem. Still third and third and medium. Trayvon Lucky on the play for Morehouse. Shannon Patrick trying to find the first down now. Hands off to Porter and is driven. Well, he's not going to make it to the marker, that's for sure. Only gains about two on the running play. Surprise run. It looked like a draw play in the end. He's going to end up coming up short. Fourth down, a three and out on both sides. It's been a defensive slugfest for sure. Both teams' defense have been showing out. Keeping the run game short and also keeping the pass game from taking over at any real facet. Besides that double pass, I'm never going to get over the double pass. 
That's what led to the second score. Kill it. The best toe in the swack. Ball stops at the 20 and kicks about a little bit backwards at the 25-ish. Oh, called, what, where are they spotting that? They're gonna spot it at the 24. Around about. Decent punt from Gillett. 403 left in the first half and the score Morehouse 14 UAVB 7 This is Tyrese Boone UAVB alumnus and play-by-play -play commentator you know at night where things happen <laughs> Here we go Michael Sims and his Morehouse Tigers looking to strike again as they take a position on the 24 Ricky Knuckles comes across. Handoff inside. No room to be found. The D-line doing an excellent job. A lot of returning phases on that squad. Frank Bailey Jr. on the carry. Frank Bailey Jr. has been having trouble trying to finding space on the inside. And it hasn't really come into position so far. In the first quarter, he had 53 yards in that corner alone, but that was mainly from one play that he actually ended up breaking for a touchdown. The very first touchdown of the game. Sims, off the spread look. Fakes the handoff, Sims over the middle, found a target. His target's number seven. Pass is to number seven, Gooden. Jamel Gooden, been, who has a touchdown pass of his own, by the way. That double pass is just going to keep coming up until I stop hearing about it. Man, that double pass was insane. That led to the second score. But either way, Jamel Gooden, the target of the first down catch. I'm, the, it seemed like UABB was looking for the, off, for the false start call. Didn't quite get it. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Coming from what looks to be the 43 yard line. Michael Sims. From the spread. Looks says inside zone. Will they do it? They do. They pull it back. Oh my, he just bounced off the tackle there. Number 11, Ryan Edwards is going all the way for a Morehouse touchdown. Michael Sims pass is complete to number 11, Ryan Edwards. Touchdown, Morehouse Tigers. I mean, honestly, it's the little things. Tackling, coverage. The little things are hurting us here and it's happening on the defensive side of the ball. As Ryan Edwards, as he received the ball, just kind of bounced off a tackle. And it ended up just coasting all the way to the goal line for the score. The extra point yes, is good. good. And almost rifled right into the fans we have behind us, behind the, the goal post. Another score. 21, seven more outs ahead. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. The score, 21 to seven with 2.16 left in the first half. Morehouse College ahead by two scores yet again. And they have not been able to solve the puzzle that is the offense of Morehouse quite yet. They have stopped them on a couple of occasions, but they've, every time they scored, it's been on a big play now. The kick is underway again. 
And here comes Tyron Ralph. Oh, actually, no. That's a different person. Tyron Ralph was setting up a block. Great, great return there on that play. Got all the way to the 40. Scratch that for 36. Didn't catch the number of the, the returner there, but a great return by the special teams unit. They gotta find a way to get in the end zone. They wanna do it before the second half. Shannon Patrick. He's not quite perfect on the day, but he hasn't thrown an interception yet. There's no turnovers, but has his hand on it. Three receivers to his left. Takes the snap, fires left side. Finds a man, caught! And he's going to drive ahead to the 35-yard line. What a play again. Shannon Patrick has been playing out of his mind. He's had some tight windows. He had to get those balls through. And either and every time he's been able to find his target. Hurry up offense again. Shannon Patrick inside run. Here comes Taylor Reporter. Able to get six yards in the carry. Still rocking the hurry up after the six yard gain by Porter. Patrick comes in the shotgun, has a man to his right. Oh wait, no, hands off to his Porter. Oh, Porter, he's gonna get a real touchdown this time. Touchdown Taylor Porter, touchdown Golden Lions. Two position lead, cut in half yet again. Taylor Porter was robbed of a touchdown his first time. This time he gets a legitimate one. Hard running, tough running, gets in the end zone, touchdown. We're, we have a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine, imagine if that first touchdown had counted. We'd be in a totally different mindset right now. But the Golden Lions are showing that lion tart that I spoke about earlier. Jamie Gillen, the golden toe. Gets that automatic extra point. Got it done. Beautiful play. Shannon Patrick started it off with a great pass and catch. And then it was cleaned up. Taylor Porter was able to pound an, un an unwitting. They had no idea that, that Golden Lions were going to be going for the hurry up offense and honestly it looked that it looked like that defense just couldn't get set up this that entire drive man oh man the golden lions are not going away they're sticking to their competition right now let's see if the defense can cause some other cause some other things to happen and maybe we can even get this game tied don't tell anybody i said it though i don't want to jinx it the golden toe setting up for the kickoff. Morehouse College trying to find a hole in the defense, and they found it a couple of times. The defense is the one that needs to patch up those holes, and they all have half time to do it. 127 left in the half. Here comes Gillen. Ball kicked far away. Going to be gathered at the five. Amir Smith breaking a couple of tackles, but ends up not going, getting to the 20. Great job by the coverage team again, getting him before the 20-yard line after 17, 18. Here comes Sims and company. As they try to find another score before halftime. This may end up being the final possession if all things go their way. The Golden Lions will receive the ball at the end of the first uh, uh, when we come back for the second half. So it's imperative that they, they it's probably imperative to the Maroon squad to get a score before now they're going to call a delay of game again that's the third of the day they've been having trouble setting up this is those first game problems man 
not quite comfortable with your offense yet, not quite comfortable with your sets. Someone doesn't get set up quite right, and you end up having situations like this. And after the delay of game. After the delay of game on the defense. I have never heard of that before. There was a delay of game on the defense? I've never, ever heard that. Huh. I'm about to relook at the rule books here. I didn't know you could even get a delay of game on the defense, but either way, now first and five after the delay of game penalty. Knuckles coming across to the right. Sims takes a snap. Outside handoff. To Santo Dunn. Dunn. Oh my God, he broke free. Down the right sideline. He's going to go all the way. Santo Dunn, touchdown, Maroon Tigers again. He just broke free down the right sideline. I can't believe this. Santo Dunn on the outside zone. The off tackle play at the inside outside option. Shows outside. Bounced off a tackle, and then it was just bye-bye Sally on that play. I made that one up myself, but either way, just kind of hiding the disappointment right now. Great run by Dunn for sure. But man, oh man, again to the two-score possession, or two-possession score. It's going to be cleared up by the extra point. 28 to 14. They have not been able to break in to the set to the single single possession mark all quarter long. A lot of points have been scored. 21 in total. By Morehouse Maroon Maroon, Maroon Tigers. Man. That's a that's a tough one to take. 106 left in the first half. Golden Lions are going to get the ball again, but man, you can only work this offense so much the defense has to step up at a point in time. Here we go. Out to receive, the Golden Lions are. Waiting on the kicking squad, and there they are. Man, that is a rough start. As the M4 looks to entertain and maybe lift some spirits here in the half to half time. They're definitely not out of this game yet. Don't count them out. The Golden Lions, again, have shown the heart before, but it just hasn't led to a win yet. And it's the first game of the season against the team we've beaten now. Have they gotten better, or do we still have things we need to work on? That's something that only time will tell as we go on through the season. But for, but for now, this game is definitely not over yet as the kickoff looks to be underway. And here we go. Ball going to be caught at the five and moving forward. Finds the inside block, breaking free. Oh, my goodness. Does not get all the way out there. Got to about the 38-yard line. Flag around on the play. And I can only imagine this is even poorer luck. Let's see. Oh, that's a holding. It's probably going to be holding. Let's see. Don't return, Kobe. On the receiving team, number 24. That's a 10-yard penalty, first half. Referee choked that one up in the middle of that one. I feel for him. Tavarius Cole called for the holding play on the in, on the quick return. And again, the timing. A great return squandered by a holding call. I'm almost glad he didn't end up getting a touchdown because that would have been even more heartbreaking. So they're going to get the ball now at the 12. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Here we go, Shannon Patrick again. Having a great day, Shannon Patrick is, but he hasn't led to, he hasn't had much help from the defense. Let's see what he can do now. Patrick drops back, fires, caught. Right side, first down and a little bit more. 17-yard passing play there from Patrick. Patrick's pass is complete. It's number 87. 
to Dewan Miller, who's been on a roll today as well. He has had a couple of really good quick catches in this game. Patrick now from the hurry up. 45 seconds and counting. Looks to his left. Fires. Long ball caught. He could go all the way. Not quite. Ball's out. No, no, no. Plays down. They have to say the ball was down. He was down right there. Yes, sir. Long play, not squandered. Beautiful play there. The long ball from Channing Patrick. It gets to Josh Wil Wilkes, who had that defense torn apart. Cut the top off the defense right there. And that's exactly what they like Shannon Patrick for. That guy has an arm of a cannon, and he's as accurate as a sniper. Timeout coming in from Pine Bluff. Woo, what a play there by Shannon Patrick. That's electrifying quarterbacking right there. Timeout from Pine Bluff. We have 10, 27 seconds. If I'm looking correctly, yes, 27 seconds. Left in the first half. The M4 looking to entertain and uplift at halftime. But first thing first. And, okay, Morehouse took their final timeout as well. Man, what is up with the referee right now? All respect to the swack. All respect to the referee, though. He's been chewing up his words all day long. All right, the clock is going to be reset at 32 seconds after the long play. The Lions just not going away. They're doing everything. They're just not going away. Shannon Patrick leads his Gold Lions out to on the field. And here we go. The mobile cannon. Can he find the target? Or will it be a Porter run that brings us to the end zone? Let's see. Trying to get the clock reset. Clock has not been reset yet. They're waiting on that. Clock has finally been reset at 32 seconds. Here we go. The end of the first half is approaching. Shannon Patrick, three receivers to his right. Let's go. Takes a snap. Looks to his right. Finds a man all the way in the corner. Oh, my God. How good of a pass is that? Tyron Ralph, 10 yards, gets the catch. Oh, my goodness. The new quarterback. Where are they building these people at? Jeez. That was an excellent pass. He's got to be almost perfect on the day. How close to perfect can he get on the day? We're gonna get the we're gonna get the halftime stats and we're gonna talk about this man, Shannon Patrick, the cannon, finding his target and showing his skill as Jamin Gillen looks to set up the extra point. And that's no good. That's not good at all. A little bit of a holding error there. Um, that kind of ruins the momentum of it. But man, oh man, look at the replay on this beautiful new Titan Tron. The, the, oof, the route combination was devastating on both those uh, both those passing plays. The, that was a post on the, uh, not the, not a post, that was a corner to the outside. And Shannon just placed perfectly. Oh my goodness. 27 seconds left in the first half, and I don't know how much uh, they expect to happen. And they might just receive it and then take a knee and go into the locker room. But man, what an exciting first game, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Your score after your score after the score. Morehouse 28, UAPB after a missed field goal and missed extra point attempts. 20. Gillen looking to take off and kick off as we approach the end of the first half. Here we go. Ball's long and caught at the five, and he is just going to take the fair catch. And exactly as I expected, here just going to probably take a knee and go into the locker room.
Now the thing we need to think about on going on going into the second half, the defensive adjustments that need to be made, whether it be personnel shifts or formation shifts. But that outside run has killed them twice, and they one of those touchdowns I'm willing to forgive because it was a trick play. But the outside uh, outside run has been a killer for the UAPB defense. Let's see what they do to counteract that as we go into the second half. At the end of the first half, your score, 28 to 20. Morehouse Maroon Tigers ahead. But for how long, UAPB has been on their tail ever all the, along the entire way. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, the Golden Knight Nation would like to take this moment to recognize Simmons Bank. Its investment in the collegiate experience at UAPB has heightened the game so we can roll it out. In addition to new turf, scoreboard, and more for the football field, a new structure, Simmons Bank Pavilion, will be built at the Tony Hunter Baseball, Softball, and Rolling Complex. At this time, we would like to acknowledge a few special people who helped make Simmons Bank Field possible. Please direct your attention to midfield. And we welcome UAPB Chancellor, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander. Also, UAPB Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Interim Director of Athletics, Mr. Elbert Bennett. Chairman, CEO of Simmons Bank, Mr. George Macris. Senior Executive Vice President of Simmons Bank, Mr. Marty Castile. And President, Community President of Citizens Bank and Pine Club, Mr. Daniel Robinson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for our dignitaries. <laughs> and now the Simmons Bank Field Gold Contest. Two randomly selected contestants are now on the field warming up. Each student has been given $50 for playing. They can earn an additional $50 for each field goal they make from the 5, 10, 15, and 20 yard line. The remaining contest contestant then has a chance to win an additional $250 from the 25 yard line. The contestants can walk away with their winnings at any time, but if they miss, they'll forfeit what they've won. Please join Simmons Bank in a roar of support for these students.
You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride.
Performing to Miss Franklin's 1967 smash hit, Natural Woman. For all those natural beauties out there, this is for you. You are a PB fan, if you know the words, stand up and sing along. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. So weird, second half starts out just about as weird as the first half did. We had a delayed entrance of both teams coming into the game. And then we ended up having a late start in that, in that game. Had a long run taken away from us by a holding penalty. Had a possible fumble called incomplete. This time that was Morehouse. A lot of sketchiness going on around. Golden Lions getting warmed up, getting hyped up. Look how beautiful that looks. Clear blue sky as the, as the lights have come on here in Simmons Bank Stadium. New turf, new field, new giant TV, new jerseys, new helmets, maybe even a new team as Jimmy Gillen sets us off for the second half of the game. Ball gathered at the four yard line. They're not even gonna bother returning him anymore. Right, they're going to start off deep, deep, deep within their own zone, in their own territory. But the outside run has been what, what has been killing UMBV's defense so far. Okay, why are they setting it after 25? I'm very confused. The ball will be spotted at the Maroon Tigers 25-yard line. I am. I don't know the rule on that one, but either way, they're going to be set up at the 25-yard line. Outside run, like I said, has been a problem. He bre almost breaks free, just doesn't. There was one man to beat before getting another yes, score on the very first possession. Flag down on the play. Coming from the back, Judge. Let's see what happened on that one. As 
Number five looks to get that first down carry. That'll be Amir Smith. An illegal low block. I guess my homework for next weekend and the next game is to look at the change rules when it comes to touchbacks. All the teams go through that at one point or another in their offseason. Well, let's see. Anyway, after an illegal cut block, it's going to be first and 15 again. Bootleg by Sims, fires out to the right side. Number four hauls that in. It's going to be A.J. Smith Jr. for Morehouse. It's about a seven yard gain. Stop made by number 20, Corey Bell. Corey Bell on the stop, but his number is a little bit different yeah, on the high sheet. Either way, A.J. Smith Jr. Good, junior, getting good, doing a good job hauling that one in and getting out of bounds. It's going to be second and eight, I believe. Hold on. Second and seven. And now teams are gathering on the field as if there had been a timeout or an injury, but I'm looking for a body and I don't see it. Play has been stopped on the field, and I'm not entirely sure why. Either way, we're going to take a break up here. We'll get right back to the action. 28 to 20. Up oh, there you go. Never mind. Excuse me. I had no clue why they had stopped playing on the field. Well, we're going to get right back into the action. Second and seven from the 28-yard line. Ricky Knuckles comes across to the right side. Sims. A little bit of a miscommunication on the handoff. Gets slaughtered on the inside there. Able to pick up a couple, but not much. Bailey Jr. has been getting a, the, the workman share of the carries, but he's getting beaten up that, on that play. I wish I got the tackler's number, but I didn't. But either way, it's going to be third and six now after the long start. Third and medium, what do they have in play? Michael Sims, as Ricky Knuckles comes across, steps back, the left-hander. Finds the check down and is able to get the first down. That looked like Amir Smith on the catch. No, it was A.J. A.J. Smith Jr. A.J. Smith Jr. getting the check down on that play, and he's going to go to the sideline, get himself a little bit of a breather. UABB defense not able to get off the field in third down. They've been struggling with third down all first half long. Sims fires again, and this time gets a good chunk of yardage. Looks like a six-yard gain on that play. His target, number one, Santo Dunn. Excuse me, number 11, Ryan Edwards, the tight end, who was a big part of their offense last season. They got a couple more weapons on the outside than they had before. Michael Sims has been doing a good job. First half stats from Michael Sims. 9 of 14 in the first half. Hands off this time. It looked like Bailey Jr. on the carry. Not able to get much again. The run defense have been good on the inside. The defensive line doing a good job. It's the outside runs have been causing the majority of the issues for the Golden Lions defense. Third down and long for Morehouse. A.J. Smith Jr. In, in the game as well on the left side. Michael Sims sends Ricky Knuckles across. Now trips look. Bad snap. Can't get there in time. Just falls on it. Concedes the possession. And a late flag on the play. And if this is against the defense, I have nothing else to say. There is a flag on the play. 
Should be fourth down and long. Let's see. After the play, dead ball failure, unquestionable conduct. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. That is something that you cannot do at this stage of the game. You're behind by eight points. You have a chance to get off the field, and then something like that happens. That's one of those things that can deflate a defense entirely. First game of the season, and bad penalties being thrown. Not bad on the referee's part, but the bad on the discipline side for our team. As Michael Sims catches the break, and he's going to try to set up again. Outside run. This has been a problem, but they contain it. For the most part, still able to get a good chunk of yards. Looks like a four-yard gain on that play. On schedule is Maroon Tigers. Handle but hands it off on the delayed handle. Santos Dunn fighting for extra yards, able to get the snap for a first down. Now they're going to try to systematically start breaking down this defense. They're doing it with the outside run. You got to keep them honest with the inside run every once in a while, but Morehouse has been doing well in getting that outside run to come out. Sims. Knuckles comes across. Three receivers right. Sims hands the ball off. Weak side this time. Inside zone. A tough running there by Bailey Jr. He picks up a solid six or so yards. Second and short. Spread look, but expect Sims to come across again. He does not. Outside zone. Bailey. Well, actually, that was Bradley on the carry that time. Not able to get much. Third and short. Looks like about one. This is a this is a crucial third down. This is a third down separating them from field goal range. And here comes your go to Lions defense. Big, big third down on this one. Third and two. Receivers set, the rest of the line looking to get set themselves. From the shotgun. Can't get it from the Wildcat. And it looks like they will be stopped short. Matter of fact, they'll be pulled back a couple yards there. Great job by the defense recovering after that terrible penalty. And they were able to at least get off the field and keep them out of field goal range as well as the punting team gets onto the field now to give away possession. Shannon Patrick. What can you say about him as the punting team is on the, is on the field and they look to return? Shannon Patrick, 11 for 12 in the first half. 243 yards and two touchdowns as there has been a whistle stopping in play. And oh yes, Morehouse Tigers have taken the timeout. They've been very liberal with their timeouts. And in the second half, it's even more dangerous. It's a one possession game still. But you'd rather give away a timeout than give away even more field position. They have the ability to pin them deep. And so they're going to try to take it. Or, this is a big or, they might be going for a fake. I would be mindful and watch out for that. They've gone for fakes before, when the game was just 7-0 in the second quarter. 
They pulled out a double pass that got them an easy score. And it got us in this perpetual two possession game all the way up until this point. Still eight points, still eight points separating both teams. And shifting to the outside, looking for the punt. Golden Lions lined up man to man. Oh no, muff the punt or muff the snap at least, ball's high, fair catch made, and it looks like the 11-yard line. Golden Lions now from the 11, Shannon Patrick has been cutting this defense apart with his accurate and powerful arm. Let's see if we can see some more of that this half. When we need it most, good start by the defense, regardless of the penalty. Shannon Patrick now. First down, team. Go to Lions. Come on, the yard line. Setting up, spread low. Inside or outside run now. Taylor Porter fighting to get to that first down marker, and he. It's going to be spotted slightly short. Taylor Porter on the third. Seven yard gain for Taylor Porter. Taylor Porter, man, unsung hero in the first half. Got one touchdown, taken away from him, fought for the second one, and got us right to this point. St. Patrick now. Shifting receiver. Inside run. Not much to gain on that play. Maybe even lost a couple. From the 18-yard line, they have to face third down. Third down and four. Patrick. Looking. Surveying the defense. That could be an offside, and it might as well be. That's a big move right there. Big mistake by Morehouse. If it's exactly what I think it is. It might not be. Let's see. Indeed, it is an offside penalty. It's going to cost them five yards and a first down, as they were only four yards behind the line of, uh, behind the line of the first down. Big play there. Taking a chance on the blitz and it ended up mistiming the, the rush. Here's Pat Shannon Patrick in, shifting defense now. Inside run, Porter might have some space. Spins off a tackle. Man, look at the tough running by Porter. Taylor, Porter, keep an eye on him, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is something else. As he fights for another first down. Porter is playing its heart out right now. 5'10", 195 out of Naples, Florida. Patrick now takes a snap, back to Porter again. Cuts up field and just goes one cut. That's all you need. Find the hole, hit the hole. Simple, effective offense coming in from the Golden Lions. Patrick again setting up at the line. The hurry up. Starting to affect Morehouse as he's stuffed in the middle but still is on his feet. And his spot is going to say first down. Rushing back to the line. As it was a big old pile up at the first down marker. Now the marker has to be reset. They can't snap it until it does. First and 10, 36 yard line. Patrick fires, caught by Ralph. Ralph spinning ahead and is going to be a tough spot. Could be another first down. It might measure it. It's going to be a first down. Favorable spot coming in from the Golden Lions for once. Hurry up is still in effect. Shannon Patrick, hands off. That, that play is going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Trying to wear down this defense with the hurry up game. Now they're not stopping just because they didn't get forward progress on the play. Second and 10. Three receivers to Patrick's is right. Second and 10 for the Golden Lions. 
Home receiver left. Patrick takes a snap. Steps back. Fakes the screen. Over the top. Call! Oh, just Kobe McNeil can't get a hold of the ball there. He's had a couple of really good catches so far, but that one is a bad drop. Chance loss. Third and ten now. And now they're going to slow down and gather themselves to the line. Patrick from the 45, need 10 yards. Steps back, fires deep, way too deep. Hyper overthrown on that play. And as entertaining of a drive that was, it's going to end up with zero points. As two of only three inter three incompletions were gotten on this drive alone. One that could have been caught. Shannon Patrick has been playing an excellent debut game. However, not going to get any points this drive around. Jamie Gillen looking to pin the Maroon Tigers back a bit. That was a high, and it looks like that caught wind. And it's going to go backwards. But it ended up going around out of bounds at around the 31-yard line. Maroon Tigers now looking to increase their lead. They're still ahead, 28 to 20. 641 into the into the second half. Not a lot of time in the uh, into the second half. The Tigers doing all their work in the second quarter. They scored 21 of their 28 points in that quarter. Mostly from outside runs and, and a little bit of trickery. Now Michael Sims in the snap. Inside handoff, faked it. Fires. Almost intercepted, but it ends up in the hands. Ends up in the hands of Amir Smith as he fights over past the half, past the midfield line. Stopped at the 46-yard line. That was a great pass and catch. And we have a, oh man, we have a golden line down on the play. If I were to guess, but I hate to do it. There's no stretching, so it doesn't look like a cramp. It could be something not great in the lower extremities. We'll be right back after this quick break. Your score at 630. Morehouse 28, Golden Lions 20. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. Inside handoff to the weak side. Able to break to the outside now. And going to run out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Frank Bailey Jr. Frank Bailey Jr. on the carry. Going to mark him a little bit shorter of the 30 yard line at the 32. They're encroaching in further and further into Golden Lion territory. First and 10 from the 32. Sims. Oh, hands off to Bailey, who runs over a player and is able to get about four. I believe it, no, actually six on the play. Def Gold Lions defense is looking a little bit worse for wear, especially dealing with this running game. This running game has been a major part of their second half attack, them being the Maroon Tigers. 
two receivers to the left. Another handoff to Frank Bailey Jr. Who fights his way close to the marker, not quite. Third down now. After a good first run, a little bit less, less than lackluster, less than lackluster second run. Third and shoulder. And even the PA man said the Golden Tigers. So you know what? I'm not alone this time. Here we go. Third and short, and stoppage in play. Timeout. And the Golden Lions want to talk it over. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. Sims checks the sideline, looks for the call. Two receivers to the right. Here we go. Michael Sims. Hands, don't face the handoff. Fade not going to get anywhere near his target. And they're going to throw a flag that late? Are you kidding me? They threw a flag well after the play was over. The Golden Lions are, 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 are clapping. So let's see the call. Waiting on the call from the chief. As he's John with some on the sideline. We're trying to see the call. I don't think we I don't think we're gonna get one. So I guess not. Fourth down, and they are gonna go for it. Fourth down, biggest play of the game so far. Sims fakes the handoff to the outside. Not going to get there. Big first, big fourth down stop by the Golden Lions defense. And here we go. This is the momentum that we needed going forward. 4:37 left in the first, in the first, and the third quarter. Excuse me. <laughs> As the Golden Lions get a big fourth down stop in their own territory, outside the range of Morehouse's kicker but still in scoring range. They tried the fake handoff option play to get to the outside, maybe pick up the first down, not quite gonna happen. Now Shannon Patrick leads the Golden Lions in his debut game where he's 300 yards in. 300 plus right now in this game. He's been doing well. Here we go, Patrick. Hands off in that one. Oh, wait, what happened? I lost track of the ball. It looked. Okay, so strange play, but Kobe Neal is going to be the one on it. I'm sorry, I lost track of the ball. <laughs> it looked like it was a handoff, but I guess it was some sort of wacky option play. Either way, gains four yards. Here you go, Shannon Patrick directing traffic. Two running backs in the backfield. Low snap, but he controls it. Long ball, 1v1. Caught! Rips it away! Spins! Here we go! He has a chance! He's caught by two, but he's not stopping! Down at the 13-yard line. Great catch. What a run. They were one-on-one -on -one all the way down the field. That was great effort by everyone involved. But the end result, another long passing play for Shannon Patrick. I believe that was Colby Neal who made that play. After the big 
17 yard line now, Patrick hands it off. And fighting forward for about a four yard gain. Cole that time. Second down and seven. 20 to 28. Golden Lions need this one and a two point of conversion to tie the ball game up. Patrick looks to the sideline. Now directs traffic. Spread out look. They've been liking it all day. Here comes the motion. Inside handoff to Porter. He's going to be tripped up, tripped up before he can gain anything meaningful. Third down. Third and seven. Big play. Shannon Patrick with a stack look on the outside. Patrick has time, fires! He elevates, but he could not complete the play on the hit. Number 31, Ben Goins breaking it up just before the feet hit the ground. Now what do you do? I think you trust the golden toe, and I believe that's what they're gonna be doing right now. Swag preseason All-American, two, two years in a row. Jamie Gillen going up for his first. Check that pass was intended for number three, Josh Wilkes. That brings up fourth down seven. Josh number Wilkes, who made this several big ball. plays downfield before. Not able to take top off defense this time as Gillen looks to put the golden toe through the uprights. Here we go, and it's good. Solid. Jamie Gillen knocks it in, 31 yards. First field goal of the season for him. Great start for him. But now, the lead has been cut down to five. Only a touchdown says victory or defeat for either team. 207, 28 to 3, 23. Morehouse College is ahead. Ahead after the after the Golden Lions score, Jamie Gillen getting his first kick, uh, first field goal, <laughs> getting his first field goal of the season, knocks it through, makes it 23 to 28. Golden Lions need a defensive stop here if they're going to keep this momentum. 7 as the kick is underway. Ball is going to be. Out of bounds, and that's going to be right back to the 40. Gillen was devastated with himself for that one. That ball's probably going to end up being spotted at the 40. As we get underway, Morehouse in the last possession got really far down the field, all the way up to the 25-yard line, but they had a, had a conundrum to make. There was a fourth and short, and they were outside the range of their, of their placement kicker. And so they had to go for They felt like they had to go for it on fourth down, and they were unsuccessful. Well, going to end up being placed at the 35. Excuse me. They were unsuccessful on their fourth down attempt. That was the first one they've tried all year. Of course, it's the first game. Either way. First one they tried this game. Now Michael Sims looks to try something new. In sweet play. I believe that's Knuckles. Uh, Santo done on that one. Sweet play has been less successful than it has been in earlier in the game, but still they go to it, and they're getting a lot of good chunk of yardage out of it. Santo Dunn has been a great scat back for him. This entire second half, here comes Sims. Three receivers to his left. Fakes the handoff and goes weak side. He's still on his feet, and he can make it. 
Not quite. He's going to go out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Good stuff Michael by Michael Sims. He was able to properly fool the defense and break a tackle or two in his wake on that 20-plus yard carry. The running game of Morehouse is being more utilized more and more. They've, they've shied away from the passing game. It wasn't netting them the results they would have wanted. But the running game has done a pretty decent job, if I do say so myself. Here comes Sims. Hands it off. Up the middle. Bailey Jr. Breaking, breaking tackles. Takes about the entire defensive squad to stop him from getting a first down. The entire team rushing to the ball and does not stop the first down. You like the effort, you like the energy, but they need to stop this running game right now. From the from the 13-yard line, first and ten. They need to get to a two. They need to get to the two-yard line to get a new set of downs. Michael Sims. Fake shifting tight end. Sims, handoff. Bailey Jr. not able to get much on that play. Shearing up the holes on the inside. The D-line has been pretty good at points but when they have missed, when they have missed an assignment on the defensive line, that's when the big plays have come around. They need to shore that up, and they did a good job right there. As we approach... The fourth and final quarter, 20 seconds and counting. Sims checking the sideline. They're probably going to run one more play before the end of the quarter. Bailey Jr. in the backfield. Safety shifts up. Fires in zone. Out of bounds. Ball was caught, and I think he ended up running up the stairs on that play. Quick feet leading to that play. And the clock stop it half a second. So they're forced to run one more play. It's third down. They have to get to the two at least, and they have to run a play right now. Not an ideal situation if you're Morehouse Maroon Tigers, but you'll take it if it leads to a score. Trips left. Golden Lions running a 3-4 look. Shifting the outside. Looks like a bubble screen. But it's again to the right side. He has to throw it away. It's going to be fourth down. When we come back in the fourth quarter, right now the score is Maroon Tigers 28. Your UAPB Golden Lions 23. Who will come down on top in the quarter of champions? We'll be right back. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride. 15 minutes left in this game as Morehouse Maroon Tigers set up for their first field goal to put it ahead, put them ahead by eight. 28 to 23, More, Morehouse Maroon Tigers ahead. And the kick is up and it is no good. That's clutch off of what looked to be a block. It looked a little bit like a block, but I'm not entirely sure. Either way, great job by the defense keeping them out of the end zone. As Morehouse needed that one, and now they're only five points out of it. Can the Golden Lions make a comeback of epic proportions? There's still a lot of time left in this game. 15 minutes is no small feat. However, this is the closest they've gotten to being, a, to being ahead in this game so far. Closest the scores have been all game. Five points differential. Shannon Patrick getting a start. Here we go. Patrick, hands off. Right side, looking for a hole. Can't find one is 
Porter. And he's going to be stopped for a one-yard gain. Big chance for the Golden Lions if they need a first down to get the ball rolling. Second and eight. Play has been stopped on the field. It looks like we have a player down. Another, another Morehouse player has been dropped. It was the second one of the day. And you know what? That one looks more like a cramp than anything else. Mandel Ray, the one on the ground. He's able to make his way off the field with thankfully little issue. As the Golden Lions head back on the field, second and eight. Time not on their side, but they have a lot of it. 14-35, blocked back to running. Patrick with three receivers to his right, snaps the ball. Well, not quite yet. Now he snaps the ball. Inside handoff, Porter, head of steam, not going down without a fight. Fights his way. Man, that guy. What tough here. running by, by Taylor Porter. Fights his way to a third and three. It's not been an easy day in, our, in the office for the 195er. But he's using all the legs in his body. All two of them. <laughs> Third and three. From the 26-yard line, here we go. Patrick drifts to his right. Can he make the play? He dives ahead, but he's not going to get there in time. And the, there's a flag behind him that makes things even worse. Flag on the play. Now, what do you do if you're if this holding? Let's see. And it's cert for certain it is. Do they take the penalty? And it looks like they do. So instead of third and short, they're back to third and long. Third and 13 to be exact. With the arm of Shannon. Honestly. I'm not even worried as much as I would normally be in this type of situation. Chan has more than proved himself with his arm. Here we go. Three receivers right. Showing blitz is Morehouse, and they're backing off. Shannon fires. Caught. First down and a little bit more. On the catch, Josh Wilkes again who has had an excellent game so far. He's well past the century mark when it comes to receiving yards. Almost had a touchdown, but ended up getting hit out of it in the end zone. But wow, he's had an excellent game besides that. Shannon Patrick hands the ball off. And not going to get much on that. There's a penalty flag way away from the ball. We're going to see what that one's all about. Relatively short game, though. Let's see what this penalty flag is. Well, I had no way of understanding what he said there. Uh, the reverb was ridiculous on that one. But it was on the defense, and it's going to end up costing them some yards. Five-yard penalty. I'm not entirely sure what he just said. Illegal participation. I'm going to have to get the Quizlet on that one because uh, I'm not entirely sure what that entails. But either way, Shannon Patrick, three receivers to his right. And he gets a little bit of help from the Morehouse defense. Another handoff, but stuffed at the line. Doing a good job plugging the holes in up front. Julius Turner credited with a stop on that play. Second and medium situation. We'll see what Patrick has in his back pocket. Patrick. Blitz. 
screenplay that didn't quite have time to develop. Third and five. Coach Gaines. Offensive coordinator, first year, debut game. Seeing what he has in his back pocket. Spread look again. Porter with Shannon. Shannon Patrick now. Catches. Here we go. Long ball. Are we going to get a call on that one? It's going to be called incomplete instead. Mm, not entirely sure on that. Tried to get Josh Wilkes on that play, and he did get a little deeper in the into that third level than I would have expected. But in the end, it's going to be a punt from James Gillen. Jamie Gillen is going to kick the ball away. Good attempt. They only have a couple of more in this game. Gillen looking for one of his patented long ball punts. And... Timeout called, it looks like. And Morehouse uses their second timeout of the half. While they take a timeout, we're going to take a timeout over here. We'll be right back. Your score with 12.23 left in the game. Morehouse 28. UAPB 23. We'll see what they can do after this. Back in the game where Jamie Gillen is looking to punt away. And another stoppage in play. And they use both of their timeouts. And we're just going to keep it right here for this one. Jamie Gillen, the All-American preseason, two years in a row, looking to get another long, long-winded punt, let's say, as two timeouts were used at the same time. They have none to work with. So, whatever happens now is we're going to look back at this moment as a big moment in the game. Will we? Five points ahead, Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College. As Gillen punts it away after the high snap. Oh, well, had a little trouble handling the punt. Does get to the outside, past the 30. Taking down around the 32. Sims. Who's been having a pretty good game. Not necessarily passing, but they've shifted their entire focus to the running game, trying to wear down not only the defense, but this clock. Teague starts to take hold here. This is the quarter where champions are made. 12-11, 28-3. Looking to increase their lead. Morehouse to either increase their lead or to take a sufficient amount of time off of the clock. Maroon Tigers, as the M4 is rocking. Yeah. You gotta love the M4, the marching musical machines of the Mid-South. That's exactly who they are. You have to say that every time, I actually have confirmation that that Mid has several Hundred eyes. You have to say the Mid South. 
every single time as they are rocking along, encouraging your Golden Lions to keep fighting. And they have been fighting this entire game. It's going to come all the way down to this particular possession. Will momentum stay on the side of the Maroon Tigers? It's right now a stalemate. Michael Sims. Stepping into the position as Morehouse gets ready to start their possession. Two receivers right. Hand off. No, he fakes it. Bootleg. Forward flick. Ends up getting caught. And a flag is going to go down on the play. Interesting play call here. It was a forward pass. Did he cross the line of scrimmage before he threw it? That is the question. They're going to call an illegal forward receiver for number 53, who I don't think I have on my list, and I don't. So, a loss of yards in the play, and I don't think I lost it down quite. Yeah, no, not quite. A loss of five yards. A legal receiver downfield. Starts out again, fourth, the first and 15. Excuse me, Michael Sims. Hands off. And he's broken free. Frank Bailey Jr. gets past the midfield mark. And a flag is down, it looks like, on the sideline. There is a flag down. There was looked to be some extracurricular activity going on on the more outside line. Let's see. Couldn't quite hear him very well, but it seemed to be a personal foul on the defense of some kind. I, I, I didn't get a clear picture of what that, what that was. But moving right along from the 31. Handoff inside, breaks free again. This time it's Santo done. And he is going to cruise into the end zone. And it seemed like the entire defense wasn't even aware that a play was going on. It was like no one knew that there was a play. It was very strange. They sold the pass on that so well. The defensive backs were all gone. They were all out of the play completely. 34 to 23, barring the extra point. What a huge play for Morehouse. That was surreal, as that was no good. So 11 points now separates both teams, two possessions still. I'm trying to figure out what happened, because that seems surreal. Santo Dunn broke past the first level, and then it just seemed like there was no further resistance. No one else knew it was a run play. They were convinced in the past. Give credit to where credit is due. That was a great call, great call by Morehouse Maroon Tigers. Man, oh man. That was just weird. I don't think I've seen something quite like that in a while. At least not at this level. Either way, Maroon, the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College up by 11, 34 to 23. The offense now has to start putting things together. Eight points gets you within a field goal, and that's, that's a perfect place to be with Jamie Gillen on your squad. Kick is a pooch. Lands at the 32. They have a chance. Ball still free. It's a slippery ball, ladies and gentlemen. Who has it? Who has it? It seems 
Morehouse came away with the ball. Looking for the official spot as we have a down Golden Lion who is at the bottom of the pile. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get the name of the, the fallen Golden Lion, but uh, way he's able to make it to the sideline number 15 helped off the field Nicholas Stroud but the defense back on the field worn down and not expecting an onside kick they have pulled out all the stops Morehouse College Up by 11, not wanting to put it in the hands of Shannon Patrick. They get right back to work. Morehouse, after the onside kick, fakes the handoff. Looking long, Simmons. Sam sacked on the play there. Dropped by number 58, Jalen Stewart. The junior is going to be second down and 14. Looks like 15. 15. Scoreboard says 14, so I'm going with that. 11.07 left in the game. And they need a big stop. It's not hopeless yet. Still, 11 points is a two possession. And two point conversion and a field goal. A lot of things have to go right, but it's still not outside the realm of possibility. Not sure what's going on with my system. Hopefully it sounds all right. Anyway, moving on. Second and 14. Inside handoff, no siree. Not going to happen. I think I might have lost my live mic. There we go. Crowd mic having a bit of an issue, but we're trying to stick with it. Here we go. Okay, we're back in business. And so are the Golden Lions defense. As they um, two molten, two stops in the backfield. Consecutive stops in the backfield. Now they have to deal with a third, and let's just say very long. Outside sweep play, gonna get back to just past midfield, but no further. Punt team's getting sent out. So the pooch play, not exactly turning out as well as the Maroon Tigers might have hoped, but they did take precious time off the clock, and they are still taking precious time off the clock. Golden Lions still have all, will still have two timeouts in their possession. So a late game comeback is still possible. Right now, back to receive the kick is Tyron Ralph. They need to be aware of any sort of trickery. I don't think they would go for such thing this far back. But let's see. Kick is away. And it's high. And it's caught by Ralph about right around the 15, probably 18-yard line. Golden Lions have got to come up with something. They need a score, and by a score, I mean a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And you know who they're going to try to trust. Shannon Patrick has been on fire all game long. And I don't know where the train stops, but 
They've been trying to work the running game to set up the passes. Hasn't quite worked. Here comes Patrick, three receivers to his left. So takes a snap, fakes the screen, fires, finds an open man. Got Colby Neal, who is upended at around the 43. He's going to be spotted at the 42. Great pass, great start. Big time first down for the Golden Lions as they just get the ball rolling. A couple more of those and they'll be in, in shooting range. From the hurry up, Shannon hands it off to Porter. Runs head first into a defender but gets two yards out of it. Not a lot of time to waste. Any forward progress is met with the hurry up as they're going for it again. They get the call from the sideline and they set up again. Patrick from the shotgun. Three receivers to his left again. Takes a snap. Deep drop. Hit as he throws, but he does get the ball off. It's caught. Ball is caught by Daywan Miller. Or no, it's not. Oh. I thought it was, and so did the band, but not quite. He was hit as he threw. It was a heck of a throw. He's making a lot of those today. Juan Miller not able to haul it in as he was tightly defended. Second down and eight, or third down and eight, excuse me. Big third down. You might think they're in four down territory right here. Porter shifts to the weak side. As he has three receivers to his right, Shannon Patrick sets up the dump off. Porter can't hang on to it and is going to be named incomplete off the trap. So, what do you do? Do you trust your defense to get you another stop? Or do you go for it all right now? And it seems like they're going to trust the defense. Maybe one or cut two more times. 11 points separate both these teams. The short passes have been the only Achilles heel for Shannon, if you could call it that. It's still his debut. He might have some more stuff in his sleeve. But right now, he's played an excellent game. Can't, can't fault him for that. Nice kick from Gillen. Falls at the 10. Can he trace it down? No, he can't. It rolls into the end zone for a touchback. In four, rocking and rolling. Golden Lions at exactly eight minutes. Trail by 11 points. They have eight minutes to show everyone in attendance the heart we've seen the potential of for probably a year and a half. This defense under the direction of Coach Navarro has a big task ahead of him. But it's a simple one. Stop the run. If they can do that, if they can get a three and out right here, right now, they're in good shape. However, if that ball gets rolling and rolling quickly and that clock doesn't stop rolling, we could be in for a very short and devastating first, first game. Well, let's see. Ball spotted at the 35 after the fair catch. I, am, I need to refresh myself on the rules of the game, but either way. Here we go, Michael Sims, hands off, and breaking free is Frank Bailey Jr. Gets a block on the outside, and he's gonna be chased out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And a little bit of laundry on the field again, and if it's another unsportsmanlike, I'm going to be very upset in the booth. Let's see what the Chief says. 
They've had a couple of those. There's a personal foul on the offense. Exactly the number or the offense is not known. Uh, referee's mic has, well, let's just say it had a bit of a kerfuffle. Either way, they're going to repeat first down as if it didn't even happen. Let's start this again. Or actually, no, it's going to be first and 10 from a little bit further up. Either way, Simps takes the snap, hands off the delayed handoff to Bailey Jr., only able to get a couple. And every play, 40 seconds. You can imagine they're going to use all 40 seconds. Burned off the clock. So you got to get a stop. Any first down is absolutely deadly for the defense. Sims and Bailey. Second down and six. From the 44-yard line. Sims. Hands off strong side. Bailey. He was going to be dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin G on the stop on that play. The defensive tackle. Defensive tackle out of Cleveland, Ohio, the city of champions. If you're talking Cavaliers specifically. All right, no more making fun of Cleveland, Ohio. Great stop by Kevin FG. Here we go. Third down and long. Biggest play of the game. They don't have a timeout anymore. Who's calling a timeout? They're calling a timeout when they do not have one. I'm trying to figure out what's going on on the field. So a five-yard penalty for delay of game. They stopped the clock. And no idea what he said afterwards. But either way, delay of game for the Maroon Tigers. 6.07 is what they reset the clock to. It's been a fun house of a day so far. Here we go. The defense of the Golden Lions with fourth and long. Handoff, predictably taken care of in the end. Five-yard game for Frank Bailey Jr. Excuse me, Santo Dunn was on that carry. As his speed has been a problem for us all game long. 540 and counting. Left for the Golden Lions. They're going to take as much time as they want going to punt this ball off. Tyron Ralph back to receive. Haven't been getting any sort of returnable punts for Morehouse. Short punt. It's going to roll its way into about the 23-yard line. Clock is stopped at 5.06. You gotta say, this is a final opportunity moment. What does Coach Gaines and his offense have in their back pockets for this situation? A new coaching staff presents new looks. That you're not, not quite ready to see. Shannon Patrick, he's showing off his arm. Hadn't quite shown off his legs. Shown off his ability to get out of the pocket and throw the ball up. Let's see what Patrick can do. Takes the snap. Five-step drop. Fires. Long. Got him. He got. He could go all the way. He could go all the way. He does. He does. 
Josh Wilkes with the long bomb touchdown. Shannon Patrick and Josh Wilkes might be the best defense tandem in Golden Lions history. I might have to check that. I might have to fact check that. But that's what I'm saying right now. Shannon Patrick and Josh Wilkes have been a, are probably the best deep threat passing tandem in Golden Lions history. Good Lord, what a play. And now, ladies and gentlemen, barring a miss on the extra point that we did have earlier, let's check this real quick. Kick is up, kick is good, and we're four points away, ladies and gentlemen. 34 to 30, Golden Lions, four points away. <laughs> so basically a touchdown away. They for they foregoed, is that a word? They forewent, whatever, they foregoed the two point conversion, just went for the one point. So they're now one touchdown away. They think they can get it at any point in time. They've been taking the top off of the defense all game long. I made a bit of an inflammatory statement calling them the best defense tandem. But man, I haven't seen anything better. I haven't seen passing like this from the Golden Lions in quite a long time. And it's such an interesting and exciting dynamic to the season. I can't wait to see where they go from here. The Golden Tone checks up, checks in to kick the ball away. This game is a never leave your seat type of game. You're gonna go hungry if you want some concessions at this point in time. 4.55. As we are kicking off, Gillen backs him all the way up into the end zone, and he's going to take a knee. Touch back. Going to be tough. Right back to the 25. Man, oh, man, what a game. What a game. What a game. As soon as you think that they're out, they pull you back in. Someone give me a movie quote. Where is that movie quoted from? I'm not entirely sure, but the Golden Lions have been doing an excellent job keeping up. But can they finish the job? They need the defense to do so. As ha, the PA announcer reminds the audience in attendance to stay off the field during play. Just in case the miracle at Sims Bank Stadium happens. Here we go. Morehouse with Michael Sims runs up the middle, stuffed by the middle linebacker. And he is elated. Number 12, no, excuse me. Number 12, Sean Steele on the stop on that play came downhill right, putting a nose right in the collarbone of Frank Bailey Jr. Loss of a yard. Here comes the defense. They know what they want to do. They want to run the ball. That doesn't guarantee that they will run the ball. There's a chance. There is a chance they could pull a surprise passing play out. Here we go. Not a lot of time. Three seconds on the start on the, on the play clock. They do get the playoff. Inside run again. This time, same result. The defense has woken up. And the run defense has been absolutely untouchable so far. But wait until after the possession before you say something like that, Tyrese. Anyway. Third and long. Third and long. Third and 11. Maybe even 10. Here we go. Sims may be forced to pass. Spread look. Looks like a pass play. It is. Steps back. Fires. Right left side. Is it caught? 
They are going to say it is. 11 yard catch. But I believe it was Amir Smith. And that's going to be a first down. That's a huge first down for Morehouse. The clock ticking down ever so quickly. Maroon Tigers trying to slow things down. 10 on the play cock. Now a five. They got to get the playoff now. They do get the playoff. Handoff up the middle and only a couple yards there. Santo Dunn on the carry. Santo Dunn on the inside carry. Just knocking more and more time off the clock. They're getting in first down to win territory. They, Golden Lions still have two timeouts. They have not used them. I would assume they would soon. They did use their first timeout in the early in the third quarter. So you want to we want to see how they utilize the rest of them. Time management now on the coaching side be, being very much a factor. Fake handoff that time and ooh gets clobbered by the numbers. Sims on the keeper. Sims tried to slide, but it was not the best slide in the world. You won't be picking him up for the, your local baseball team anytime soon. Timeout called by the Golden Lions with 151 remaining in the game. Biggest third down of the game for Coach Thomas's debut, for most of this coaching staff's debut. And for the debut of Shannon Patrick and company. Can the defense step up? Or will Morehouse get that first down and essentially the victory? 151 left in the game. 34 to 30. It is as close as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. And one play, this very play, can separate both teams. Let's see. Five wide for Sims. Spreading him all the way out. Passing play. Sims sneaks up the pocket, gets sacked. Beautiful. That's exactly what you want if you're a Golden Lion fan. And Sims will be dropped in the backfield by number 58, Jalen Stewart. Jalen Stewart? I need to see that man on Monday at the press conference. Jalen Stewart has been a defensive dynamo. He's been a brick wall in, in, on his side of the field all day long, and he gets the clutch sack. Tyron Ralph now going out to see if he can make something of a punt. Chance. Chance. There is a chance. I believe this is Coach Collins' family. Uh, the children are dancing. And they're having a good old time over here at Simmons Bank Stadium press box as we are underway looking for the punt. 144. 34 to 30. Golden Lions trailing. Bad snap. Punt blocked. Or it looked like it was. It's not going to get past the 50 or at least sits on top of the 50 and he's you know <laughs> comically trying to blow the ball further up the field short field 132 what can you do coach James what do you have Shannon Patrick what do you have sir now is the time you show us This is the worst time for something like that to happen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. First down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Last drive of the game. Essentially, 
the game ceiling drive. Let's see what Shannon Patrick has. Three receivers to his left. Hand off to Porter to start off. Weak side. Gets upfield. Ooh, repossesses the ankles of a defender. And he gets up into the sideline. What a play. What a run by Taylor Porter. What a run by Taylor Porter on that play. Shifting, dipping, ducking, and diving. The five Ds of Dodge Ball being utilized on the football field right now. And Taylor Porter repossessing a couple of his ankles. And able to get all the way to the sideline. How big of a play was that? Shannon Patrick. Spread look. Sneaks up the pocket. Fires. To Porter, who's not going down without a fight. Gets five yards in that play. No timeouts to work with. They got to get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, well. Injured Maroon Tiger on the field. And he is having a hard time. Let's keep it right here, though. Man, oh, man. Four points separating both teams in this hard-fought game. I mean, honestly, at the beginning of this game, I called this game a measuring stick to see where we are. Well, right now, here's a couple of things we've learned to get together. Number one, this team has heart. For sure. They can battle through adversity and compete with the best of them. Now, when the competition gets stiffer, we have an idea of how they will respond. Number, th number two, Shannon Patrick is that dude. For sure. He's been able to sneak balls through the windows, through passing windows that have been absolutely insane. And number three, if we win... We might have ourselves a really good team on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Shannon Patrick doubles look. Looks to his left. Fires. Downfield. Got him. But not quite a touchdown. Josh Wilkes again getting himself a catch. Now dropped at the three-yard line. We have a chance to walk away from this game. 57 seconds left. Shannon Patrick again, box filled, Porter, can't go far, got to get back to the line though. Quickly, 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 you have to get to the line now, you have no timeouts to work with. Four, the clock is ticking down, clock is not your friend, Patrick, three receivers left. Another handoff to Porter, can't get far again. You gotta keep moving. You gotta keep moving. This is the biggest chance of the game. You have to get the ball in the end zone somehow. 19 seconds. Patrick trips right. Looks to pass. No, it's set. And that's the game. Oh, man. Ah, the first sack of the game, or second at least. And it ah, tears my heart apart to see a team that competed so hard all game long fall to something like that. A well a well contested contest taking nothing away from either team man oh man fingertips away from victory but no timeouts to work with had to rush and in the end Morehouse comes out on top 34 to 30 that's the end of the game let's talk about what we learned ladies and gentlemen Cedric Thomas Although he started, he starts his UAPB career with a loss, has shown that he has instilled a culture of, comp of competition. He has shown these kids that you have to compete for every down, every play, and every situation. That has not changed, and that never will change. 